everybody, I'm Nasty Mold, and in our most recent beta update, the intro to the entire game has changed for new players. Everything about it is very different, and I'm gonna go through and show you exactly what has changed, and what it now looks like. Hi, spirits! Now, I do want you to keep an open mind, because I've seen a lot of people are angry that the intro isn't like it was before, which obviously it's different, so it's not going to be, but that intro sequence is still shown a little bit later in the beginning. So keep an open mind and think about this as what would you think as a brand new player? Is this a nice way to ease into the game, experiencing something a little different and then a bit more of a tutorial sequence, or do you prefer it how it is? I actually do like this change personally. There will also be some spoilers to Season of Revival quests coming up. We're going to go through pretty much all of the quests, or at least up to the fourth one um, in this playthrough. I will leave timestamps below so you can always skip ahead if you don't want to be spoiled too much, so I'll leave one for every single quest below. With that said, let's get started on this brand new Intro to Sky. I'm not going to talk too much during the intro sequence. So that is the new intro sequence. I think it's pretty cool. I think it really ties in the whole fact that we're getting reborn from the Eye of Eden. We come crashing down. And this is essentially our new home space, the Aviary Village. We have some tutorial cues if you're brand new, how to move around, how to control yourself. So let's continue on and I'll show you some of the quests. We have to go up to the fourth quest before we can kind of go through the realms again and see the old intro in a different way. Um, I do want to say that the original home is still available. If you are a lover of the original home, you don't care for the aviary village whatsoever. That is still something that you'll be able to go to. I believe after the fourth quest, you'll be able to go there. But new players will have to stay at least in the aviary village for a little bit. You can also see that our moth self has a different hairstyle, and they have added two new moth hairstyles to the game on top of our original one. So when you start out, you actually have three. There's this one, which is a bit of like an afro textured hairstyle. And there is a twin pigtail one that's kind of similar to that old Days of Bloom hairstyle. 
So honestly, I do like the beginning sequence a lot, and I do like that it kind of showcases how powerful you can become, especially when you are in the final part of uh, Eden. You kind of feel like an immortal, super-powered sky kid. You can kind of fly forever, you're all golden, you're beautiful. And then crashing down, you start over. I think this is a beautiful way for new players to start. And we also start out with this cute village. Now, the way I've been thinking about it is this is sort of a tutorial village in a lot of different games. Basically, we have to do a few of the uh, Hopeful Shepherd's quests, and in doing so, we'll learn some very, very basic gameplay. It's still called question mark, question mark, question mark. A hidden refuge, lost to time. Now, you won't actually be able to explore much of this village without first doing the uh, Hopeful Steward's quest, and I'll show you as we get over here. A big gust of wind starts billowing, and we have to finish their quests. Return to the Hopeful Steward. Kind of scary. Okay, we will, but first, look at this. It won't let me go at all. Wah! Kind of a bit of a forced tutorial, which I do think most players would need. So this is literally just the first quest. There's not much to show, I'm sure. Pretty much all of us have seen the first quest at this point. So I will skip ahead just a little bit. One thing I do want to show while doing this quest is if you're a new player, there are actually prompts to make sure you know that you have to burn this darkness. So each one has a little blue star on it. And as we, of course, light them and burn the darkness, they disappear. So sitting down in this chair kind of shows you that this is meant to be a place you can change your hairstyle. In this game, you'll find many hairstyles you can find, and you can chase them. So to start off, we don't even have to unlock these. We have the moth hairstyle, the textured hairstyle, and this new twin pigtail one. So every single user will automatically have these unlocked as a way to kind of showcase what you want to look like, and also show that there are probably more things to unlock in the future. So high five, and we'll turn in the quest and keep going on. So once we've turned in the first revival quest, we can now free roam around the area. There isn't a lot that we can do here, of course. Um, the Isle of Dawn portal is still closed. To open it, we'll have to just keep doing some of the revival quests. So let's go back to the revival guide and continue doing them. There's really nothing that would really uh, direct you towards doing more of the quests other than when you leave the salon and places like that it'll kind of point the camera towards the revival guide but if you're a new player you can see there's really nothing here it's a very foggy desolate place so you'd either go into the uh, seasonal items room you go into the salon or you just continue to speak to the revival guide so I do think it's pretty obvious what you're supposed to do here let's carry on with the quest so we have the second quest here Hopeful steward, take my hand. And we're gonna head over to the enchantment shop and set it up. So once again, we have a statue we have to light. It's pretty obvious what direction we have to go as there's a big shining light that way. And with the camera angles. And we're just learning very, very basic things here. Like, oh, if we have these statues, we pull our candles to light them. Makes sense. You're also learning simple things like how to move around. This is your first time ever playing the game, so you're learning that these spirits kind of tell stories as they progress. And we're helping them out, and we're reshaping this entire area. You learn that you have to follow them, and how to follow them, and all sorts of things. Just picture yourself as a moth with no idea what to do. This does feel like a little bit of a tutorial that you're going through, but in such a good way. And simple things like the guide will wait for you, and... Hmm, we're looking at this. Oh, I guess we should light it. Oh, whoa, this area's changed. Kind of very simply, subtly, they're still not directly telling you the story, but you're figuring out what you have to do. Oh, it's powered that. 
Weird. A door is opening. Huh. What a weird world. Essentially, I guess we can look at the season of revival as a revival of the entire game, in a sense. It's going to be the new beginning of the game, and it's got this tutorial village which you'll continuously build on as the game progresses. I really like that. So for the second quest, we have the enchantment guide from the season of enchantment, and they gift us a paper boat. For you. Thank you. You have received a message boat as thanks. So I suppose this is a tutorial to kind of teach us how to use or at least place items. Drag from the icon to place your message boat in the water. Okay. Hello. Done. Complete. Easy. And then you're going to look around. You're going to go, okay, what do I do now? I can't interact with them. Oh, I'm inside them. Oh. The hopeful steward's waiting for us. Okay, let's follow. And then we follow them out. Really, really simple things that make you go, okay, so I have to follow them. Easy. Alright, so that is the second quest. Let's turn it in, and we'll start the third. Alright, so we obviously have to do something with this. I guess let's go, we'll figure it out. We're a new player, we're not super sure what we're supposed to be doing. Something's obviously missing here. Oh, it must be that candle there. So it's teaching you to interact with your surroundings in some way. Some quests you can pick things up. And that's how we can use things and move things around. This one. And they're gonna help us. Thank you. This one's a little weird because we haven't actually had something in the game where you've had to place it down yourself before. So you have to go here, place down the candle. Boop. And we can light it. And now go back and pick up another one. So beautiful. So I think that quest is meant to show just how transformative quests can be in certain areas. And of course, you just want to make this place your own home. As you can see, we now have the official title, Aviary Village, for this place. And yeah, we've really transformed it into a place where we'd like to be. It's not so foggy, it's not so dismal and spooky and weird. It's our new home space. Beautiful. So now we can explore, we can go around. It definitely feels lively. 
You can see that there's actual people in my uh, server now. I'm not sure if they appeared after the last quest. They might have. So we can see that still this realm portal is not open. We still obviously have to do things. Things have changed whenever we've spoken to the hopeful steward, so let's continue to do that. Let's do our next quest. It's very weird to not be able to fly around, but I mean, when you're a moth, it kind of makes sense. But you'd see all these cool people, you'd be able to light them now, see how cool they look with their capes, and you go, ah, I want to look like that, what the heck? So this is the quest that starts it all. Let's make our way over to the gates and see what all that rumbling's about. Now we're able to light this map shrine, so let's go do that. Well, it's already lit. I guess let's go sit down at it. And finally, we get our original tutorial message shown to us. So that is not lost in any way. It's just a little further on once you've familiarized yourself and followed the hopeful steward just a little bit. At this point, we also get our first map shrine, which is the Aviary Village. And looking at this, like, okay, so I just have to continue on. Oh my goodness. Look how massive this world is. And it's truly even bigger looking than what this map is. The map makes it look small. So if you're a new player, you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> There's a lot to explore. The steward is telling us, go to Eden. Go. But first, we'll go through the Isle of Dawn. That's a lot easier. So there we have it. The Realm Portal is open, and we can navigate the game as we normally would as a beginning player. We get close, and the Hopeful Steward will wait for us. And I have to imagine that after you complete the Isle of Dawn, they'll be outside the next Realm Gate and the next Realm Gate, just telling you, hey, don't worry, keep going. Which is nice because, as a new player in home space, I mean, the portal's open, but you kind of don't understand, so it's nice to have the spirit guiding you. I wanted to use an emote, but I don't have any emotes. I forgot I'm a moth. <laughs> so yes, that is the new intro to the game. A little less dark and spooky than home space, but I do appreciate it. I like it. I like that um, the aviary does become a beloved home to a lot of players. And here we have the normal Isle of Dawn intro sequence. So the game progresses as normal. With Aurora's voice singing in the beginning and of course the end sequence of the game. 
yeah, that is it. That is the whole intro, and then obviously I'm not going to play through the whole game right now. I will at some point in the future and make a big guide on that. But yeah, what do you guys think? I actually think it's pretty cool. It still has that beginning sequence, just a little different. Once you finally unlock these realm portals to start, you open up the aviary village and make it kind of habitable. And once you complete the fourth quest too, a bunch of spirits drop down and they live in the aviary village. So it kind of feels like you've helped them find a place to live after you've relived them and completed Eden. So that's got to be a very good feeling. Yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I do like it a lot, but of course, your opinions matter as well. That is it for this video. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Hope you found this helpful. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. See you around.